Hey everyone, um, I'm Daniele. I'm a senior software engineer too at Microsoft, and I'm going to present Cache Grant, uh, my take on high performance caching and a number of development, development techniques I have implemented uh, to make it uh, this blazing fast. Um, first, a, a brief introduction. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm working on Cache Grant, it's my open source project. I am doing it uh, out of passion and I'm spending on it um, a lot of hours. Um, I love performances. Really, in my mind, there are no good reasons to let hardware go underutilized. Uh, we, we spend money on resources, so we shall use them. Uh, outside work, I really spend a lot of time and probably too much uh, playing with embedded hardware. And my last project was a, a small security camera built on top of, uh, of a ESP32, which was using both a thermal camera and a, an RGB camera to have a better, better motion detection. Uh, but let's get into, into it. So what is Cache Grant? A Cache Grant is a modern, blazing fast, open source caching platform designed for performance. It's built for speed, it's written in C, scales vertically, uh, almost linearly. Uh, it's a really a general purpose solution. It's not just you know, super fast for a, for a specific use case. Uh, and currently I'm working on, a, among many other things, on network stack bypass and uh, on disk database. Um, it also aims to be protocol and command compatible with the most known caching solutions. Why cache grant? Uh, modern hardware requires a really modern software to, uh, to be able to express all of its power. Uh, the architecture of the most popular alternative, Redis, is really outdated and it doesn't scale vertically more cores, they will not result in better performances. Uh, with Cache Grant, although it's young, um, you currently already can get 5.1 million of get operations <clears throat> and 4.5 million set operations on a, on a um, AMD Epic 7502, uh, which is 40 times faster than Redis that would run on one single core, and at the same time, um, CacheGrant was handling 6,400 uh, clients, so 64 times more load. Um, with batching, though, we get to 60 million get operations and 26 million set operations, which is great if you're doing data ingestion or data processing, uh, or you want to integrate it into your uh, data pipelines. This is how it looks under the hood. Um, well, of course, there is the hardware and the kernel. This is not Cache Grant. Uh, but Cache Grant has a set of low-level functionalities. Uh, then there is a set of high-level functionalities. And, and then we have the modules on top where we have uh, Redis and Prometheus, for example. Cache Grant is modular. So the functionality is posted by the high level library in Cache Grant are to be used by the, the modules. So uh, I'm planning really to add support from Memcache uh, in a while and potentially down the line uh, to Kafka and GraphQL and other things that can really benefit from having um, a, a performant KVLU store for caching. So some number first, normally, Presentations try to explain why they are good. I am just going straight to the numbers, and we will get to why it's good later. Um, we can see from from uh, from uh, those numbers why Cache Grant is uh, is so fast. With 64 cores, we get to uh, about 40 times uh, more requests managed compared to Redis, and at the same time, it, uh, Cache Grant was also managing uh, 64 times more clients was handling 6,400 clients in parallel. Uh, meanwhile, Redis and, and Cache Grant on single core, when it was on just one thread, and they were handling only 100 clients. So each column uh, uh, represents 100 clients per thread. And we can see from this chart that it almost doubles up, um, it, the amount of requests almost doubles up uh, each uh, the, each doubling the amount of uh, threads available and used. Uh, around 32 and 64, it starts to slow down simply because the operating system needs resources also to process network data. So um, cache grant can't steal uh, the whole scene. It needs to give something back to the operating system. And the same really applies to the set operations. Uh, the numbers almost double up until it gets to 32 cores and then 
it slows down a bit uh, because the operating, the operating system uh, needs resources to handle 6,400 clients in parallel. Um, I know it's indicated at the bottom of the slide, but just to point it out, the hardware used uh, for those benchmark uh, were three servers, where two were used for Memetire benchmark and one by Cashcamp or Redis. And all those servers were using the same hardware, uh, an AMD Epic 7502 with two uh, 25 gigabit network links and 256 uh, gigabyte of memory. Uh, if we look at the latencies, again, we can see on the right um, how CacheRand really performs better than, um, than Redis. And even on, uh, on, um, uh, on the P999, um, it's able to provide sub-millisecond uh, latencies. Uh, on the left, we have a CacheRand working with uh, 64 threads. And uh, so the, mach the machine is really saturated uh, and with 6,400 clients, but still it has a very, very good uh, P99. And actually until uh, P99.7, it still has very, very good latencies around 3.2, 3.3 milliseconds uh, tops for the set operations and around three for the get operations. Uh, if we get to the batching, well, the numbers are uh, much higher. Uh, those two uh, charts have been generating uh, using uh, batches of 256 commands. So on the left, we have 256 gets um, per, per command sent by MEMP tier. And on the right, we have 266, uh, 256 set commands. And we can see that CacheGun gets to handle about 60 million get operations per second and about 26 million uh, uh, set operations per uh, second. How can it be so fast? Uh, we're going to get, uh, we're going to see other numbers, just to point it out again, the hardware used for those other benchmarks and charts is the same that has been used for the uh, charts that we have um, just seen. So it's possible to have um, a fair comparison. So one of the most important uh, components in cache and it's is our custom uh, memory locator. Uh, it's a bit of a mix between a, a slab locator and TC malloc in the sense that it uses fixed size allocations and also leverage a per thread cache. Um, the big advantage is that it, it, it's able to leverage huge pages uh, to perform allocations and free in O of one. And that's because on Linux, all the huge pages, all the two megabytes huge pages, they're actually aligned to two megabytes. So with a very simple end operation here represented by a module for to make it more understandable, with a simple end operation, CacheGAN is able to get right to the metadata of where that memory is allocated and then figure it out uh, where the data actually are. And thanks to this approach, it really, in a, in a bunch of operations, it can mark a memory slot as free or can mark it as utilized and so on. And uh, also, thanks to this approach, statistics and, and things like double free catching, they really come uh, at no cost. Um, it needs a lot of improvements because there's a lot of unnecessary branching. I didn't have time to improve it uh, further. Uh, but really performs dramatically better than uh, TCP, TC malloc and the uh, OS malloc, uh, the uh, memory locator in use uh, in Ubuntu. Um, it's possible to see really that uh, <laughs> uh, on the on the top chart with 16 threads, the amount of time necessary to allocate uh, memory is very close to zero. And uh, with 64 threads, it's still uh, about 10 times faster uh, than PT malloc and the operating system malloc in use in Ubuntu 22.04. Cache around uses fibers. Um, it uses fibers to perform IO operations on the disk, on the network, and also to, um, to suspend operations in, uh, in the target in progress. And there is a big advantage with using fibers. Um, fibers uh, allow you to uh, to perform a cooperative uh, context switching. Cooperative context switching is essential when you work with high-performance applications because it lets you to do not interrupt your application. 
in the middle of a critical operation, like I don't know, um, there is a there is a lock locked, and you really prefer to do not have your application be interrupted with the the lock locked, because otherwise other operations will have to wait. And this really helps a lot. Of course, the kernel can still preempt um, the thread that is running the fiber. Uh, but there are settings that can be used in operating system to uh, entirely prevent this. Uh, normally, fibers are compared to thread pools, but really uh, they are different uh, because a thread pool is not built to uh, to perform long running operations where instead a fiber is. And also, thread pool you have to carry around a lot of status uh, and these states, and it's really annoying. And um, in terms of performance, really the chart on the right shows why fibers are better than threads. Uh, an, an, an unpinned thread takes a most 4.6 uh, microseconds to uh, to be context switched uh, versus 1.4 if the thread is pinned and versus just 12 if a fiber has to do a context switch. With 10,000 context switch, uh, a thread would literally take 14 milliseconds, a pinned thread, because an unpinned one uh, would be 45. Uh, so the, the performance is fairly different. Uh, another really important element of cache run is how the data structures are implemented. They are really optimized for the CPU. You know, very often in, in the codes, for our own sake, we tend to make uh, data structures built to be readable, but the CPU doesn't work uh, doesn't work like we do, uh, and so it's not really able to leverage uh, performance properly um, when the data are not organized as needed. So in cache ground, all the main data, for example, the one the main data structures, for example, the ones in the user by dash table, are organized to be uh, are organized to be efficient for the CPU and. Um, the main and the most, uh, I would say, uh, simple example that we can do is a linear search. So when you do a linear search in, over an array, you are basically access, accessing all the slots of this array. Now try to imagine that if the data in this array um, are gigantic, the CPU will have to read a lot of times from the memory. And reading from memory is slow. Instead, if the data in this uh, array, they are small, um, they are just the tiny necessary bits you really need just to understand if you want to read the, uh, the data in their entirety, um, the CPU really can leverage the internal caches, in this case, the cache lines or the L1 cache, and basically process sequentially, dramatically reducing the accesses to the memory. And this really shows up in, um, in this chart, where in the worst case scenario on uh, on cache ground we have a, a, a six times better performances, and if you think about it, once the lunch table is full, basically your worst case scenario is the the, the average uh, case. Uh, so that's really a critical element. Another um, very important element in uh, in cache ground are the CMD instructions. They use them to accelerate the linear search. Uh, that was uh, illustrated in the slide before. Uh, SIMD operations are single instruction of multiple data. They allow you to define one single instructions, one single operation that has to be carried out on a number of different data. And those kind of instructions really cover a wide range of cases. Um, in CacheGram, they are really used just to, uh, to optimize the, line, the linear search, uh, but you can really use them for, for a lot of different improvements. Um, with the AVX 512, um, uh, there are some extra considerations that have to be uh, taken into place because normally with SIMD operations, uh, you can get you can hit limitations uh, on the CPU, like the number of processing units or the memory bandwidth. And uh, with the AVX 512, uh, the temperature also becomes a problem. In cache ground, uh, uh, they have to be enabled at comp uh, compilation time on specifically, otherwise they, they will not be used uh, because of this reason. How much performances, uh, how much additional performance they uh, can provide? It's about 2.5 times in the worst case scenario. But as we have mentioned earlier, the worst case scenario becomes kind of the average scenario. Um, 
Another very important element of the, uh, the data structures implemented in CacheGrant are the localized spillock. The hash table in CacheGrant is, can be accessed um, by a number of different threads and multiple operations can be carried out in parallel. Um, when a thread has to write on the hash table, it will uh, lock a spin lock, perform its own operations, and unlock it. Now, this operation might sound slow, but actually it's built in a, in a very smart way. Um, the hash table, as we have mentioned earlier, it's, um, it's basically a huge array. And in the case of Cashian, those huge arrays are separated in buckets or chunks of 14 elements. And each one of those chunks has its own spin lock. Um, and so when Cashcan has to write into a specific bucket, it will lock the entire chunk. So it will lock 14 buckets together. Um, this allows to spread the contentions across all over the hash table. So if you have 10,000 keys uh, or 10,000 buckets, you are going to have a bit less, in the case of Cashcan, a bit less than 1,000 uh, chunks and therefore uh, uh, about a bit less than 1000 spin locks. And this really means that unless you're writing the same key, it's very likely you're going to hit a different spin lock and therefore uh, you're not going to hit contention. And this really is um, kind of the key element of uh, what let the uh, hash table in Cashion to perform so well uh, because it really it's really able to spread the load across the entire hash table. Um, and this really can be seen in those charts. You would expect, uh, if, if, you, if you would double up the performances, doubling up the threads, you would expect um, the ability to carry out about 200%, the 200% of the amount of operations compared to the previous iteration. Uh, in, the, in the chart in the bottom right, it's possible to see that this is almost true with the hash table in cache grant. And in the worst case scenario, so with 64 threads and, and therefore a lot of parallel operations, um, we get about 170% of speed improvement compared to the previous uh, iteration with 32 threads. And it's able really to carry out about 85,000 million uh, operations per second, which is, uh, which is a nice amount. Uh, last but not least, uh, IO ring. Uh, IO ring is used for the networking, but also for the uh, disk IO. It's a new API. Um, it has been discussed quite a lot in the in the last year, I would say, in the in, in the world of the performances. Um, it really helps to reduce the amount of syscall performed, and therefore the amount of context switches from uh, user space to to kernel space. And this really helps to reduce latencies and carry out more operations. CacheGrant is using uh, features from the uh, 5.8 version. Um, honestly, I'm waiting for the release of the kernel 6.0. Uh, both will have a, a bunch of new features uh, that are very, very fancy, especially zero, the zero copy uh, send uh, to be implemented in CacheGrant. Um, if I pinch it to your interest, you can try it out very simply. And it's very straightforward. Just download the config file, edit it as needed, and run it via Docker. And you can find everything on, uh, on GitHub. And here there are my contacts. Feel free to reach out if you need. And um, thanks for listening. <laughs>